authenticity and just the the trust that comes from people's faces and not just a brand, you know, talking at you is, you know, that's that's huge. Hey, I'm Karina. And I'm Taylor. And this is Direct, a podcast we created to showcase the creativity and hard work of good market teams everywhere. We're here to share the stories and experiences of the hardworking, passionate individuals who make up go-to-market teams, the ones who truly make the magic happen. Taylor and I have been fortunate enough to work side by side on some incredible projects together. And now we want to put a spotlight on the unsung heroes behind some of the best go-to-market campaigns out there. In each episode, you'll hear from individual contributors who have gone above and beyond to make a difference. They'll share their challenges, victories, and the lessons they've learned along the way all to help you unlock the next step in your career. Get ready to be inspired, learn something new, maybe even share a laugh or two. Welcome to Direct. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Direct. I am so thrilled to be here today with my co-host, Taylor. Taylor, hi. We are thrilled to be here today with Ben Regeer. Ben is the new face of community marketing at Comsor, having just transitioned from the world of sales after nearly three years. He is a dad to two boys, a former U.S. Marine, cigar aficionado, and passionate about community and relationship building, as well as American history. Ben, what is your favorite cigar? Oh, wow. I was not ready for that one. <laughs> Man, I, it's funny. I actually just did a, I just made a tweet about like my top favorite cigars of 2020. I would have to go with the Davidoff Anniversario number three. So okay. That's, that's my favorite one. Is so. that, now I am clueless. Is that a Cuban cigar? Are they mostly Cuban cigars? I wish. I oh. wish. But that is the forbidden fruit. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you know, for true. The, for those true. of us in the U.S. <laughs> that's true. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. Yeah. yeah. Well, learn something new then. Oh. Ben. We always start our show off with one question, and Taylor is going to kick that off for us. If you had a magic wand, similar to mine, doesn't have to be exact, if you had a magic wand and you could change in about your role professionally or just something about your life, um, what would you use it for? That's a great question. Um, I would use that magic wand in your hand to make the world a little bit more considerate. Tell us more. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, a little bit of a backstory to this because it's kind of a, a recent thought that I've had. So about six months ago, I, it became very clear that I needed to build a personal brand. I'd seen so many people doing this on LinkedIn and the, where it got them, like the opportunities that arose from them in just having community, co you know, or I'm sorry, communities on my mind. Coffee chats with people about like, hey, this is kind of what's been going on as I've been building my brand. And so I, I started thinking like, I need to start doing this before, you know, who knows what, what could happen, you know, whether it's career related, you lose your job. I saw another post that said, start building your network now before you need it. And so that really hit home. And I was like, I need to, I need to get on this kind of thing. But part of having a personal brand is being able to have a, a thesis, essentially, or that's how I've perceived it is having a thesis. And so I started thinking, okay, before I build anything, I need to think about like, what's my thesis going to be? What is the thing that I can talk about for hours that I don't need a script for, you know, like, what do I talk about with my friends if, if no one stops me kind of thing? And, and so I had a, I had a really difficult time thinking about that. It's, it's hard to be very introspective like that, I think, in, in many cases, because it's just, it's just kind of hard to see yourself from a third person perspective. You know what I mean? So as with most things, I, I have a lot of conversations with people. And one of those with, was with my wife. And I think a lot of the, the conversations that I do have with people are enlightening because I look for wisdom from those things, you know, asking people what their thoughts are. It's, it's important to look for wisdom in those things. And so I remember I wasn't even seeking it out. I, I had some sort of situation going on with uh, someone in my, my circle in real life. And, and like, they said something specific to me, I couldn't figure out what they meant by it. You know, they said it a certain way I can, you know, there's a lot of nuances and stuff. And my wife said something to me that really stuck with me. And that was kind of the turning point for how I found essentially my thesis and what I wanted to talk about in my personal brand. And she said, uh, and I'm, I just have it written down because she said it so well. Uh, she said, you can read people well, but 
that sometimes causes you to get lost in the intricacies of the relationships that you do have. Um, sometimes that can be a really good thing, or sometimes that can be very unhelpful, kind of a bad thing. So that's when it clicked for me. And I realized, you know, I can talk about personal relationships, relationship building, networking. I could talk about that for hours. And so, so my, you know, kind of getting back to the personal brand aspect of it, what's my thesis? Like, what, what do I want to teach? I want to teach the world to be a bit more considerate in their relationships, how they engage with people, empathize, sympathize with people, how they, you know, and it's the simple things that I love, like making eye contact with people and listening well and repeating back what people say, things like that. So that's a long winded answer. Hopefully that that's kind of the that answers the backstory. It's a beautiful thesis. It's a great backstory. And I think that having like having heard you just say that I'm reflecting on my own in person experiences with you and you are an excellent storyteller. And you surprised me with where you where conversations went. I remember you telling a mm. story about when you were a manager for a Starbucks. Yes, yeah. And you had a really horrible customer experience with the car. They were they didn't get the <laughs> remember you do you remember what I'm saying? Yes, yeah, yeah. absolutely. And yeah. you were considerate in how you not only told the story, because if somebody mm. else told that story, it could have been very judgmental about the mm. customer, because it wasn't a positive experience, but you were very considerate in how you told the story to kind of remove biases. And then you were mm. also incredibly um, considerate again and empathetic to why maybe the person reacted that way. Yeah, so I think that that's spot on and, I, and it is very rare for, I, I think especially with men, just to be clear. <laughs> so it was quite unexpected, but very, very genuine. And I think that that rings true in like all your content too. So I don't think it, you have to even be with you in person to have those conversations, to have that really shine through. I think that even shows in the, the video, the content that you're creating. Mm, thank you very much. I, I appreciate that. Yeah, that's that's kind of what I shoot for. Um, and it's, it's a lot of those little things that I notice in person when I'm talking to people. And, it, and I think it happens when you I think you notice those things when they don't happen. You know, a lot of these things, like when someone's, when you're talking to someone, you're trying to tell them something, something, and they're constantly looking left and right and all around. And you're like, I want you to, I want you to hear me, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so. Be seen, be present. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, can you tell, do you think that that's how you are? Cause obviously we talked about you being a U.S. Marine and then you, you know, own, were a manager for Starbucks and, and now you're in this B2B space. Do you feel like that that characteristic has also kind of shown up in job interviews or how when you approach a new company? Yeah, absolutely. And that and that's kind of the that's actually kind of what led me to Comsor even just to I think, you know, I guess if I could I hate to toot my own horn, but like you know, the, like a sensitivity to to relationships and a sensitivity to to people, I, I guess you could say, just in, in a nutshell. So when I, when I was at Starbucks, you know, it was during the height of the pandemic and, and that was just a terrible time to work in food and retail. So that's, that's ultimately what led me to remote work. Cause I, I had heard about remote work back in 2019. It wasn't a new thing in 2019, obviously, but I, it was so new to me cause I wasn't in that world. And I was like, man, I want to be in that because my wife was pregnant and I wanted to, you know, be home more and be able to be present with her and our new son. And so I just started reaching out and finding communities. And so that, that's why it was kind of cool, kind of meta, you know, to land at Comsor because uh, a, a community company, right? So finding a community company through an online community was, was kind of meta. But in the way that I, I did my job searching, I, I reached out to the people that were hiring. I tried to build a relationship with the people that were hiring as best as I could, or as much as they would allow me to via LinkedIn, you know, so, mm -hmm. or Slack or, you know, whatever the platform was, but. So I started to build a relationship with Katrina and Mac over the next month or so. And it's funny because it wasn't, the role wasn't, uh, they told me that the role, they wanted someone with a little bit more experience for that particular role. And I was like, okay, that's fine. So they essentially created a role aside from that for me after getting to know them for about a month. So mm -hmm. yeah, I guess you could say like to answer your question. Yeah, I, th I think that has definitely contributed to, to where I am now and that, kind of, that journey essentially. Yeah, quite a bit of persistence um, in, you know, building that relationship. And like you said, meta between 
using community to land a community. Can you tell um, our audience just that maybe is not familiar with Comsor what you guys do and, and maybe what you're doing for Comsor now? Absolutely. So Comsor, we are we're building um, we we help people invest in their relationships and their network. And so we have a couple of different products that we're in the process of building to help people do that. We're very early stages with it, but essentially a personal relationship manager, Bronto, and also Matcha for communities. Yeah. And so what I do at Comsor is community marketing now. And the first three years, I'm coming up on three years actually at Comsor. And the first two and a half or so I spent doing sales. So that was the initial role that I jumped into kind of as a full cycle, full cycle rep to start out with. And I jumped into some SDR work for some cold outbound and learned a lot in both, <laughs> in yeah. both of those roles, but very much partial to the, the, I guess you could say like the full cycle, more intentional type of outreach, as opposed to more of the spray and pray kind of thing, kind of, kind of approach to me you're resonating with people with your video content. Yes. And for people that maybe haven't seen your videos, sometimes it's just you on a bike talking, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right? And so you right. found this like niche and I'm wondering if it's like so much about these innate qualities in you that just lend itself more to a marketing professional background than right. a sales background. Yeah, that, yeah, absolutely. So, so I found with, you know, while I, while I enjoyed the full cycle type of sales work because you get to, you know, read, you get to do both ends of it, like the closing aspect, the, you know, the generate lead generation aspect of it. I just, I found myself shying away from the closing. Like you have to be, a, a, you have to really be able to move people to mm. close them. And I'm not really a people mover essentially, you know? So especially in, I guess in the sales regard, I'm not a people mover. I, I can't push people mm. to decisions like that. And so, and I would rather teach people about something that I'm passionate about. And so, you know, to your point, with the videos, I, I feel like I've really found my stride with, I can go get on my bike and just talk about something that I'm passionate about as, you know, and not just for the sake of talking about what I want to talk about, but as essentially, you know, top of funnel content. And that's why it's so cool because it's kind of like this match made in heaven because Comsor is, you know, we're focusing on network building and relationship building. And so as top of funnel type of content, I can talk about relate like why you should be investing in relationships and why you should be investing in your network. And so, so it, it's in, in another sense too, it's, it can be difficult to kind of differentiate between my personal brand, but also like what Comsor is doing. Mm -hmm. So I've had a little bit of trouble with that and trying to differentiate those things, but I've kind of come to the conclusion that I don't really need to do that right now. I can just, you know, talk about these things because it works for both ends, you know, for myself personally and for the company too. So, yeah. So yeah. I agree. I mean, it's you're yeah, you're very much living your truth and it's very much aligned with what Comsor is saying. And it's really great just like story structure too. And I think that that's like a mm. it's an underrated skill set with marketers to be able to tell a story effectively. And I think especially with short form video content, right? Like you have to kind of have like a clear something that hooks you in. Then you yes. kind of have the meat and then you have something that's like, okay, this all makes sense and all goes together. I don't know. I'm just curious. Have you ever explored like creative writing or anything like that before, because it's very clear that you have like a natural talent for storytelling. Oh, thank you. Yeah. That's, that's always been an area that I've been really interested in, especially like the, I guess you could say liberal arts. That's, I've always, I've always just been interested in writing. And I found that that's like one of the very few things that does come natural as writing. And that was like the one thing that I could grasp the one, you know, the one thing I did well in school, like math was out the window, you know, everything else was out, the science was out the window, but writing was kind of my my strong point but I really look at it as and this is a, a a whole different topic but I look at it you know videos as a type of paragraph because you remember in like elementary school they would tell you I think it was like the red light red yellow green light oh, structure yeah. of a paragraph right <laughs> yeah. when you stop and you you write the topic sentence that's a hook and I'm just going to talk about what the body is about and then the the conclusion right and so I very much view it in that regard when I'm you know making these videos but the, the other side of it, though, is I'm, I'm kind of struggling with, I, I, I feel like I script things too much. And so I'm trying to break away from that and trying to be trying to internalize these com concepts before I go out and make the video. So I'll think about something for a while and try to internalize it in that and, and then just go and talk about it on my bike, my purple mm. cruiser bike, you know, so <laughs> um, that's kind of that's, that's what I've 
what I'm currently working on is trying to internalize these things so I can just go and speak from the heart into the camera. What would you say to people who want to build personal brand and want to be out there more in their community, but have a lot of fear coming across inauthentic or, or mm. around that? Yeah, that's a really great question. Wow. Um, so my, my initial thought is, um, and I'll, I'm going to try to take this slow because that's a, that's a big, that's a great question. My initial thought is put aside the imposter syndrome and just go for it because as much as it might seem like I know what I'm doing, I really don't, you know, and I think that's true for most of us. Like we're, I mean, my, my first videos were, were me just kind of like bashing cold, cold go to market. <laughs> and I kind of yeah. look back at that and I'm like, I don't know if that was the best. <laughs> you know? you get a, did you get a reaction from it? Like, was it you know, a strong reaction? I, I did. I did a few in a few instances. And I think there were some subtweet type of posts. And I was like, I think that's about me. But, but you know, I, so I kind of regret that aspect of like the, the topic choice. But I, I don't regret, find, you know, using that to find my voice. Because it, I really look at that as a, a, a time period where about a month or so, where I just learned how to talk about things in a very short time and in complete, you know, mm -hmm. a complete thought in a very short time that would be palatable to people for, you know, on LinkedIn. And mm -hmm. so, yeah, so I guess my, yeah, my first thought is put yourself out there because it's not going to be perfect. And I, I, I watch a lot of YouTube and a lot of these, you know, a lot of creators say your, your initial content or your the initial part of your brand is going to be miserable and you just have to keep going. You just have to keep putting it out there and just keep, keep iterating on what you're, on what you're making. So yeah. does that answer your question? Hopefully that. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm actually curious cause you alluded to it a little bit. I'm curious your opinion of um, creators, people who are getting out here online and they are sort of intentionally inflammatory or have intentionally, um, <laughs> A negative divisive. opinions or divisive opinions going out there. Um, do you have any thoughts on that approach? I mean, it definitely gets impressions, but I, okay. So let me, okay. I have to go to the story a little bit because I was watching, I was, you guys know Casey Neistat, you know Casey Neistat, uh -uh. he's like a vlogger out of New York, New York city, just really cool video style, but he was being interviewed and he was kind of comparing his style uh, of video content to Mr. Beast. Like he's very much vlog type of <laughs> uh -huh. type of creator, like just day to day, like, here's what I'm thinking about. This is what I'm doing. Whereas Mr. Beast is like full production kind of thing. Right. And, and he, and he was saying, you know, it's not a bad thing what Mr. Beast is doing, but he's just doing a very different approach. He just has a very different approach to YouTube and, you know, video content that he's creating. And it's just kind of more of like a business aspect. Whereas he, he said, this is more of a, of an art form for me. And this is, it's not about likes. It's about, you know, videos of refined way of expressing myself is what he said. And so I think, you know, to answer your question, I think when we go back to the divisive stuff, I think you have to ask yourself, are you looking for the likes and just the validation that comes from social media or are you doing this because you truly believe that? And like, this is part of, you know, the narrative that you're trying to um, put forth. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a hard one, right? I feel like the dopamine hit <laughs> that we're all accustomed <laughs> to. It's just, mm. it's hard to, to get away from it. For me, yes. when I, when I create content, I'm just like, I, first of all, I don't think I have something to say seven days a week. I really don't. So I don't, I don't post seven days a week because like, mm -hmm. I don't have something that important to say all the time. So I try and just be mindful. Like if I feel like I have something to say that's of any sort of value at all, then I'll say it because my, my whole intention with creating content is to like evoke conversation. And, mm -hmm. yes. you know, the, some people may be trying to evoke conversation for a particular purpose, but mine is really more so that we can all learn from each other and get different perspectives, et cetera. But Right. Yeah. I think I was listening to something today from Jay Akun. There was a great event that he put on to raise funds for a content creator that's struggling with brain cancer and hmm. huge success, by the way, massive. So impressive to see community come together that way. But he was saying that like so many times, like the imposter syndrome is people just don't, they swing the opposite way with like the ego pendulum, right? Like they're just mm -hmm. so like to your point, they're so afraid they, that they won't even try. And he said exactly the same thing. He's like, that's not what, just go out there, 
be yourself, like to your point earlier too, Ben, about having a personal thesis, that's what's going to stand out and that's what's going to make you somebody's favorite. Yes, exactly. Yeah, absolutely. Have something to teach. Mm -hmm. Have something to, that's new, you know, don't, yeah. Something well, and I think new. what you guys are doing at Comsor is new. Like I think this approach mm -hmm. to community and networking, it's like, it's, it's a little bit different. It's a different way to go to market than I think some other even community platforms. So I'm curious, like now that you're more on the marketing side, how do you find that some of your top of funnel content, how do you convey the impact or value of that internally? Yeah, that's, that's a really great question. And to be transparent, I, so I'm about a month into this role. And so I'm very much trying to work that out. And I'm at the point where I don't know what I don't know, if that makes sense. Have you heard that? Before? Like, I, that's, yeah, <laughs> I think that's sure. such a good way to, it's such a good way to, to think, you know, and it's a good springboard to, to go off of when you're in a new, in a new position or doing something new. So right now, like just this very week, I am, I'm very intentional about who, about surrounding myself with mentors and people that are veteran marketers because I, I, I don't know right now. I'll just be very honest. Like, I don't know. I know that, you know, we've created a lot of brand awareness lately. Like people yeah. are starting to, I feel that people are starting to know who we are, but now my, my thought process is, okay, I need to, I need to transfer this. I need to translate this into moving the needle for the business. And so that's just what's in my brain right now. And getting there is going to take a lot of mentors and a lot of wisdom from people that have done this before, you know, before I have. Right. So, yeah, so it's, it's very anecdotal right now. It's very anecdotal. Like, yes, we have a lot more brand awareness than we probably ever have before, but is it because of this or is it because of that? I'm not entirely sure yet. So. Obviously there's some hypothesis that it's, there's like, step to what you're doing, right? Because this this was very much approached to you about this new marketing role. Am, am I mistaken there, right? Yes, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or no, you're not, you're not mistaken. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. So there's, there's, and, and I, I hear you guys talk about it. Like you guys, it's, it, it is really impressive. Like this Bronto Dino is just crushing <laughs> it. Everybody wants their purple hoodie. Everybody wants a Dino sticker. Like it's, and <laughs> it's really hard because it, you're, there is so much just like, I don't know, mm. nostalgia. You guys even have like a dinosaur newsletter that's just about dino facts, right? <laughs> right yeah. So you're yeah. building all this brand affinity. I mean, that in itself is like, maybe it's not translating to hard dollars or pipeline quite yet, but clearly you're building momentum to be able to stand out in a very crowded market. Right. Absolutely. And it's not to say that, you know, it's not, you know, there, there are, the dollars are starting to like show up. And it's, you know, so, but like attributing it back to specific things or campaigns, I'm just not quite there yet. Oh, you said something that I was going to piggyback off of. And, uh, dino facts, dino newsletter. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. That's yeah. perfect. Yeah. So the brand awareness, like, I, I think it's, it's very exciting. It can be very, very exciting because you know the the spotlight is kind of on you and that's it's new and it's exciting right but yeah, like i said before like what's what's top of mind for me right now is i one i don't want to waste it and mm. i want to like leverage this to um, move the needle for the business and and but the other the other aspect is i don't want to i don't want it to cloud our vision or the mission because i think that can easily very, very easily happen. You know, when the, it's not like we're super famous or anything, but like, you know, to all of us, it's kind of, it's new and we're, we feel like it, but I, I feel like that could very easily cloud the mission and what we're, what we're after. So, so yeah. I come from a background, digital marketing. I want to click in UTM and source every single thing, but there's so much power in just bringing up that awareness and having really great conversations and, and unironically just building really strong relationships. And one of the ways I think I recall seeing on your LinkedIn that you guys have done this, a really inexpensive way to get a lot of attention at an event. You were in a dinosaur costume at a recent event. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. What was the thought process behind that? So I'll, I'll kind of start from the beginning. Back in June, we, Back in June, we, we kind of had this thought. We were kind of sick of just run-of-the-mill 
type of, you know, brand awareness, marketing, whatever you call it, right? We're just, you know, like, and so we had this thought, let's just be weird. Let's just get weird with it. We don't want to be boring, a boring B2B company anymore. We don't want to do things the way that everybody says you have to do things. And so, so we kind of had that on our mind all summer. And then go to market, Pavilions go to market 23 in Nashville was, was kind of on the, the calendar in the coming months. And so we were, we had all these different ideas. Like we came up with hot intros and, you know, we just had, we were just coming up, we were brainstorming. We had a notion doc full of just weird ideas that we could do at this, at this event to kind of put ourselves on the map. And one of them was just, I don't know. We just, one of them was dinosaur, dinosaur costumes. And I saw that one and I was like, yes, I need that one. I'm going <laughs> to do that. Yeah. So I, I walked around in a brontosaurus costume and handed out hoodies for, um, for a while. <laughs> It stood out. I mean, look, I can just like, this is a total testament to, to that thought process. I was in the Slack group because that's where I met Ben and the Comstar team in person was at mm-hmm. that event. So I was in the Pavilion Slack group and the Comstar just kind of showed up and said like, hey, who wants to come to the booth for Hot Ones Challenge? <laughs> Di- you know, you'll see us around in dinos, like stuff like that. People responded. And these are like C-level executives. So it just goes to show you that so much of your mission, I think, is aligning with your outcomes, right? Be be authentic, be different, be focused on driving like experiences and building relationships, which really breaks the mold for for B two B and how we're thinking about going to market. Yeah, absolutely. Like the authenticity and just the the trust that comes from people's faces and not just a brand, you know, talking at you is you know that's that's huge and. I think, you know, even Tim Davidson called this out in one of his videos, but just nobody wants, nobody wants to come to a booth to talk about software, you know? So, you know, that, that whole shift and everything is, I think, happening too, but nobody wants to talk about that. And that's kind of what it sprung forward from is how do we just be somebody that doesn't, doesn't just drone on about our software? Because nobody wants to hear that anyways. So, (laughs) so we want to talk about hot wings instead. (laughs) Yeah. Well, I think it's, you know, you've kind of displayed right here, I I think, how to, without even knowing, I think you're very much with your own content. You're showing, you showed Comsor, like, why you are very well fit to be in the position you're in, which is really like, I mean, when you're marketing, you're you're very much the mouthpiece for Mm -hmm. the company. And I think that your videos show that. So I want to bring it back to our question at the top, which was, if you had a magic wand, what would you do? And you said, you know, help make the world more considerate. And just like throughout this conversation, it does sound very much, and it is it is kind of obvious even without spelling it out, but it does sound very much like that is the mission in a lot of ways with Comstor, where mm-hmm. you're being considerate in your outreach and your, how you build your network, less of the spam, less of like that, you know, forced entry. So right. I don't have a perfect like response back about like how can that happen? But I do wonder if there's, some content series that you guys could come up with. That's almost like, I don't want to say masterclass because everybody does a masterclass now, but something like that where you're kind of showing like, Hey, like I did the dino costume. I did a video on a bike and then I've met somebody in a Slack group. And it's like all these things contributed to being considerate in how you go to network or, and how you interact with people. So I'm wondering if there's like some content series in there that can help make that at least like maybe a little reality in our micro community. Yes. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, it's interesting because I'm finding that content creation is so meta, like you can create content about creating content. Yeah. <laughs> so um, it, it's hard, yeah, hard to train your brain to think that way, but yeah, that's, so I'm, I've been thinking that way as well. Like, I, I like how you said masterclass too. I think that's, that's definitely the direction that I want to go at least with my personal brand. But again, it's, mm-hmm. you know, hard to differentiate between Comsor and what I'm, what, you know, the things that I want to teach too, because they're very similar. And I, I think I'm fortunate that way. But I think, yes, absolutely. I think that should definitely, or even, you, you know, just how to, just kind of thinking out loud now, but like how to, you know, em- emotional intelligence, I think is a, is a big part of this too, you know, how to respond. Like there's, there, okay. So I follow this, there's a guy on TikTok who he just plays out different scenarios of how to respond, uh, how someone with high emotional intelligence responds to things and how someone with low emo- emotional intelligence responds to things. Ooh, I want the link and to that. Yeah, I can, I can definitely send it to you for sure. But something like along those lines, how to, how to 
react to different situations. I, I think that would be really cool. Not to copy him, but yeah, no, I think that's great. Like almost like this is the this is how we always approach community. But look at kind of like how that's like becoming like a spray and pray obvious model. Here's like maybe the reverse of that. Yeah, I totally could see that. Yes, yeah, absolutely. And and actually, one one thing I'll add to is uh, a lot of this came from doing doing things how I didn't want to do them. You know, a lot, a lot of this you, you kind of learn from what you don't want to do. I think, and that's uh, that's very much a, a a story, a testament to my my own personal story and career journey. Is like I. Okay, I didn't want to do the Marine Corps anymore. So what's next? You know, <laughs> mm-hmm. Starbucks definitely don't want to do that anymore. What's next, kind of thing. <laughs> but you know, going back to like cold, you know, or just outbound, the way that I was doing it, I I burned so many bridges, and I just mm-hmm. got the most scathing emails back. And it was hard because that's not who you know the way that I was acting was not synonymous with who I am as a person or who I you know believe myself to be. And so getting those emails and these responses and you know reactions from people was just like, there's got to be a better way to do this, you know? Mm-hmm. So it was, yeah, that was yeah. a different tangent. No, it's, it's mm-hmm. I mean, it's, it's, I very much relate to that. I know Taylor does too. It's very much like, you know, charting your own path. And I think when you're like living authentically in that truth, mm-hmm. the stars mm-hmm. eventually align. And I think they are aligning for you right now. Comps are super lucky to have you. And Ben, just thank you so much for joining the pod. We cannot wait to see all the Dino content, all the Ben content, <laughs> all of the above. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you both so much for having me. Such a pl- privilege. Thank you. Oh, thanks. Thanks for listening to this episode of Direct with Karina and Taylor. If you enjoyed what you heard in today's episode, please give us a follow, maybe even a five-star review, wherever you listen to your podcast. And if you know someone that you'd like to spotlight, if you want to share your own story, visit us at motionagency.io forward slash direct. We'd love to hear from you. 